this gathering. We know that we are all about spiritual upliftment. We are all about, hallelujah, our current life and the things that you have called us to. We are all about getting ourselves right for what you're about to do with us. Thank you for what you did on Friday. It was phenomenal. But Lord, I am believing you that there will be more on tonight. So as I stand on the altar of God facing your people tonight, let self decrease. Let none of Providence Anna, Apostle Anna be seen. But I ask that the Ruach Kodesh will open my mouth from another level, another realm, another dimension another frequency, another place in God. So that when we leave this platform tonight, we will be edified, our spirit will be transformed, life will be filled, hallelujah, of the new birth of the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, I ask that the court will be opened. Which court are we going to go tonight? Based on the prophecy that God has released upon me tonight, we are going to traverse tonight into the court of Esther. This is going to be dynamic because the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me all through the day about the role of Esther. And many of you are prophetic Esthers that are brought to the kingdom for such a time like this, that God is getting ready to lavish you with insight and prophetic strategy so that in this season when God is processing many people and lavishing some that have been in the battle for a long time and they're battle worn. Hallelujah. There are some of us that we are a part of the redemption of what God wants to work on a global scale. And those people are history makers and those people can no longer be hidden. So God has given me that insight about it today all day i've been travailing hallelujah and i am here tonight to excavate through the scripture we're going to go hallelujah to various parts of the bible we're going to see why god is hallelujah 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 dealing with us on this level and why we should run to him and not hide in this time there's no hiding place actually so even if you went to hide the enemy is coming there to seek us out god goodness and mercy will prevail in all circumstances and we will always be the victor and not the victim where victim where we put him at the front of it all. Praise the name of the Lord. So once again, we're going to go to the court of Esther. Why the story of Esther is so precious unto us right now as we see, hallelujah, the kind of genocide that is going on on a global scale as it relates to COVID-19 pandemic. But there was something so precious about Esther that caused me to want to go through this with us and this biblical narrative and see how influential this woman is and how she can teach us various ways to approach things irrespective of the kind of pressure that we're on. So give God the glory tonight. We're going to go to the court of Esther. We're going to ask the Lord to open the court of Esther for us. And as we go in the court tonight, I am telling you, when the mantra of Esther begin to fall on you as it did on me today, you will begin to see yourself in a brand new light. Some of us, we have purpose, but the enemy wants to bury that purpose to make you think that you're no good and it's not your time. But God is closing out all those voices and all those things that are building up all kind of uncertainty and fear in you and God is getting ready to usher you into a new season, your prophetic Esther season. And so let us go to the court of Esther. And so Yavava, I want to enter the court of Esther 
in the mighty name of Yad E Avai. I ask tonight that mysteries will be spoken. I ask that you will forgive us of our sins, any atrocities, any wickedness in us, anything in us that is not becoming Christ, anything in us that will make us a misrepresentation of you. Halibo, shatter that you cannot give us this mantle that you give to Esther that upgraded her life. I pray tonight in the name of Yahshua that the court will be opened Open, the books will be open and this platform hallelujah that we're on tonight Shata. it will be brought into heaven judicial system i want to go to the appellate court the very high court and i'm asking holy spirit that every man and every woman that will hear my voice tonight they will pick up whatever mantle you have prepared for them in this end time this sermon will begin to restore their act of worship to you, even the midst of a genocide. They will begin to see you, Robo and all your attributes at work. Father, as I come in this Supreme Court, I thank you that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and you were the God of Mordecai and Esther, and you are our God. The earth is yours, so we enter into the appellate court. We enter into heaven judicial system. We ask that as we enter, you will accept our worship. The gates of thanksgiving will be open for us to enter in. We praise and adulate you. You are worthy. You are holy and righteous. We plead the blood tonight over us right now. We bind every attack from every frequency and every realm. We ask, oh God, that angel will be strategically set in place to protect us and to guide us. We come against counterfeit atmosphere. Mama Kusaya. Let our body be the vehicle that you will drive tonight. In the name of Jesus, we ask that all areas of our lives will be covered. Come on. We covered ourselves internally and externally and every bit of provision that you have coming for us in this season, it will not be harassed by the enemy. We cover our current dwelling places, all vehicles, all technologies, all devices, everything that belong to us. We cover it. Let them come under your stewardship continuously and give us continuous inflow of your Holy Spirit in the prophetic name of Jesus. Special welcome to Prophetess Burke, um, 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 Pastor Ingrid Rampal and all your precious people of God I welcome you tonight it's going to be serious because God has been dealing with me all day I'm telling you I was just rolling from one pillar to the other because this word is so precious as it relates to the time that we're in and so we're going to go through the scripture going to excavate through the scripture and mantles that pertain it unto your mantles that pertain it unto your destiny and your purpose that God has called you to fulfill in this season. I want you to personalize it because this is when it gets very interesting because nothing in your life is going to be wasted. Everything that you were going through was part of your preparational hallelujah process. And that process is coming to an end and God is getting ready to showcase you. You're you're going to be showcased by your father, just like Esther was showcased. But for many of us, before going to the text, the reason why God have you at the backside of the desert, because there were certain strategies strategic thing that God wants to teach you because we're living in a time when there's all kind of onslaught on children on our spirituality the 
enemy is currently raging war against us. Demons from every region are attacking new age powers, new age, hallelujah, army and new age occultism is sweeping all over and people are getting ready to realize that the lower plane is actually too dangerous for us. So we have to come up, whether we like it or not, there is a call to come up higher. And I hope that this, hallelujah, this teaching tonight will help you to perform Prophetically align yourself in coming up higher. Can I have an amen in the name of Yahashua Amahashaya? Praise God. So God began to talk to me about um, Esther and what is getting ready to do with the Esthers in this time. I was so excited until God began to tell me the kingdom prerequisites. Hallelujah. I begin to say, well, God, listen, I, I know you want us. I know, hallelujah, there are things for us to do. Hallelujah. I see so many men and women on this platform that God is going to use me to prophesy to tonight. Carleen Burke, you're one of them. God is going to use me tonight to speak a word in your life. Uh, thank you for taking the time to come on this platform in the prophetic name of Yahshua. I would like you to share the um this this um this teaching on tonight. Share it in all your your, your platforms so that we will be um getting more people to come and over on this side. Praise God. So let us go into the teaching on tonight. And so my Bible, biblical verse is going to be taken from, hallelujah, Esther chapter 4, 1 to 17. Now, in a land far away lived a king, hallelujah, who was a very great king. He had a great empire. His kingdom was so vast. He had power beyond measure, and he had a beautiful queen, hallelujah, who is called Esther. But before we go into the old chronology of all this thing fierce out, let us look at a, a background, a background, hallelujah, a background study on Esther, hallelujah, in brief, because I like to go into the deep. Thing. You know, I, I don't like to go on the sh surface and God has never called me to the surface anytime. Hallelujah. So I pray that as we are going in tonight and uh, looking at the background of all oh, Esther, hallelujah, survive in all her land, hallelujah, there was none as beautiful as Esther, as noble as Esther, as intelligent as Esther, as pure as Esther, understanding, hallelujah, the kingdom prerequisite to obtain a certain dimension of favor and also to maintain that favor. So the book of Esther can be vastly explained on how the feast of Purim came. And this is a feast that was celebrated by the Jews. Now, now, Esther, this beautiful Jewish wife of the Persian king that is called Azazaras, hallelujah, and her cousin Mordecai played a significant role in persuading the king to retract an order, hallelujah, for a general annihilation, hallelujah, over the Jewish people. This is very serious. Because the king in ignorance gave the arch enemy of Israel, which is called Amon, gave him the bill of the legal right, power of attorney, hallelujah, to execute God's chosen people. Now, this, this annihilation of the Jew throughout the empire was a massacre that has been plotted by the king's chief men. And I want you to look at this very serious because those who are planning our demise are sometimes in high position or sometimes they are our associates. So here we have a man, the king chief minister, hallelujah, that decided on a date when all the Jewish people will be annihilated. But God, who is so faithful in mercy and plenty us in justice, 
instead of Amen, Angin, Hallelujah, Mordecai, who was also assisting Esther to get the relevant authority in need and to get her voice heard so that she can help in the emancipation of her people. Hallelujah. She, Esther, Hallelujah, understood her, 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 her assignment. Many of us today, we don't understand our assignment. And this is very crucial to what you are about to learn tonight. You see, God have each one of us for a purpose and for a reason. When we, if we want to get the most out of the, 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 the book of Esther, you have to participate spiritually and mentally to understand that sometimes God can use you as the chosen vessel, hallelujah, to display his power when all else is breaking loose in our economy, in our churches, in our individual lives. When there is an assault of the demonic, when the kingdom of hell and the kingdom of darkness is raging war against God's chosen people. Some of you novelettes, some of you Frederica, some of you that God had in the backside of the desert was where you were being trained and prepared by God to come into purpose at this prophetic season. So we have Esther in this land, hallelujah. The king, as I said, was a great king who had such a dynamic empire, but there were so many things that was being constituted. So the, the, the wicked one has constituted so many evil things. Now his kingdom was so vast and God has given him favor beyond measure but this beautiful queen was not into the kingdom for just her beauty and her excellence and her dignity there was a kingdom mandate that was up on her life the bible goes on to tell us in esther chapter 4 from verse 1 i'm going to read the first verse it says but one day the queen vashti who was the reigning queen and uh, in, in the king's kingdom and empire she was told to come out and to display her royal beauty but she was upset Vashti refused to listen to the king's demand, upset by, by the audacious, hallelujah, hallelujah request. The, the queen said, revolt. She said, this is serious. Why should I come out and I'm paraphrasing? She began to argue this. Why should I come out and display my beauty? For what? So this poise a concern because a king word is supposed to rule. And it is something that the people begin to look in under the tutelage of uh, uh, Amen and other hallelujah of the king's cabinet. They begin to suggest to the king that if you cannot have your wife to listen to you, how can you get other people in the kingdom to listen? So that calls for some serious, serious action of the king. And the word of God goes on to say, upset by this audacity, the queen said she will not come out. They were concerned that if the word of the king cannot stand out among his wife in the kingdom, there will be a revolt. There will be a rebellion and other women will not submit themselves to their husband. Praise the name of Jesus. So Vashti had to be removed from a royal place. I know I'm going to touch down tonight. I don't know who it is like a Vashti that is sitting in your position. Praise the name of Jesus. But whoever that Vashti is, God is getting ready to remove that Vashti because the kingdom assignment on your life requires that you be in a particular position in that field so that you can fulfill whatever mandate the Lord has 
place on you. Who am I here for? Prophetically speaking, many of you have been ostracized, criticized, written off, forgotten. Hallelujah. Throw to the curve, kick to the corner. Many of you are wondering why? Why am why is my life like this? People have blocked you. People have talked down on you. People have criticized the God in you. And all of these things to discourage you from fulfilling the purpose of God for your life. But thanks be to the God of Esther that among our contemporary, she was chosen. God had an assignment that could not be fulfilled in Vashti reign. So Esther had to replace her. Am I talking? Vashti was removed from a royal seat, a royal position. But who wants to know that the new queen would be a pagan girl? The new queen would be an orphan. Her name in Hebrew is Adassa, which means a myrtle, a tree. Praise the name of the Lord. And so God began to deal with this woman. Some of you, we are very thing that God has given us, and they are our weapon. For Esther, her beauty was a weapon, and that is why I don't want you to be religious, because religious people always block the flow of what God wants to do. If it was in our own kind of churches, people would be wondering why a born again believer, what right have you to go and parade yourself in a beauty pageant? Of course, this beauty pageant is something that God was going to use instrumentally to inaugurate Esther into that place where she belonged in order to fulfill her kingdom assignment. So God in his infinite wisdom that is unchallenged by man's opinionated mind and man's religious mentality, God saw ahead of time that he is going to need a, a savior. He's going to need a kingdom representative. He's going to need a woman that have the anointing. He's going to need a woman that can hear the voice of God. He's going to need a woman that can talk back to, hallelujah, the other persons that God will put to pioneer with her for the kingdom it's, um, the kingdom mandate, which is Mordecai. God needs someone who has the understanding that you have a mandate. You are not brought into the, the kingdom because your beauty, you're, you're excellent. Hallelujah. You're intelligent. You're educated. You have anointing. Huh? That's not the only kingdom prerequisite. Those are be a beer characteristic that will comprise your assignment. But the greater part of the assignment is the mandate. Praise God. God needs someone suitable. Hallelujah. So a beauty pageant was the course that God took. All of the world's most beautiful women from every region of the world were sought and brought to the palace. Many of them, it was not only Esther that had the suitable characteristic of a queen. Somebody better hear me tonight. But Esther's anointing and beauty and excellence and her kingdom assignment and her relationship with God make her stand out among the old and standing. Are you hearing me? Praise God in Zion. All of the world's most beautiful women were called, but Esther was the one that was selected. She found the unquantifiable, the undeniable, the unrejectable favor that cannot be contended with. She found that favor in the eyes of the king. Such women stood out at their best. And the test goes on, but Esther was not failing because she was under the advice of someone who had a relationship 
with God. Somebody on this platform, you need to be, hallelujah, connected with people that hear God's voice. I don't want to run ahead of myself, but I remember in 2019, I gave a prophecy about genetical modified, hallelujah, mosquitoes. And to my surprise, one of my spiritual daughters who is online right now, Providence Novelette, Sister Faith, she's called. She sent me and she said, I, I looked at it and I said, look how long this prophecy was given. But it was in Fox News yesterday. Uh, Florida keys to see release of the first genetically modified mosquitoes. Praise the name of Jesus. And I said, God, look at this word again. I will send it to you. This is the word. You can go back through my, 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 my YouTube broadcast. You will find... Uh, uh, you will find the um the, the broadcast that I prophesied. And this is what she sent me yesterday. Uh, I mean, earlier on this morning when I got up. So God need men and women that will hear God. Not witches and wizards that are bending things to fit their, their need. If they hear that God is not choosing them for this purpose, they will work sorcery and to bend you, but how many of you know that God's getting ready to take them down and take them out because the hour has come when God's Esther must be enthroned in a rightful place without any opposition, without any manipulation, without any infiltration, without have to watch her back and who going to poison her, who going to kill her, who going to bewitch her. She is the queen and it's her time to reign. Praise the name of the Lord God Almighty. A beauty pageant, as I said, was um, incensed. And so Esther found favor in the eyes of the king. This this, this, this thing jumped out on me so profound. I said, God, may I find favor because you know what? It's all about you getting your favor from your God. Rikabo Shadabaha. Now let me begin to break it down. Hunger from revelatory insight of what God gave me. Sometimes the other competent competitors, they start to parade, hallelujah, against you, the assigned one, for the assignment, are you hearing me, Patricia, are you hearing me, Ingrid, Grandpa, sometimes God has you, he has been preparing you at the backside of the desert, you are the chosen one, but your rivalry, these people who don't know what God is, is doing in you, they begin to parade, against you. Can you imagine if Esther did not have suitable instructor and mentorship? She may have been brought into confusion. Maybe her inferiority complex would have come in. Maybe she would be asking herself, how will I even make the school when there is so many pretty women among us today? Hallelujah. There will be so much things that will be going on inside of her. But the because our source of information, because the mentorship was coming from someone who had a connection with God. She was a hallelujah, confident that whatever, hallelujah, whatever Mordecai tell her to do, hallelujah, it's not just Mordecai, but it will be stamped with God divine signet of approval. Am I talking? Praise God. So Esther is an orphan. She, in, in her Jewish heritage, she was raised, hallelujah, by her cousin Mordecai, advised Esther to keep her Jewish heritage a secret. This is very profound. Some of us, God, would make us dress a particular way, look a particular way, but it is a disguise. Some of us, God, don't want to worry. I bet it is to be seen. Some of us got eyes us at the back side of the desert. We were not called, we were not chosen. Everything passed us by. It was 
God's tragedy. It was God's plan to preserve us from being polluted. Some of us, God was preserving us from being killed. Some of us, God was preserving us from announcing ourselves too quickly. Man, Kalabadushkai. Many of us, we announce ourselves too quickly. And the warfare is so severe that you gotta run back in. Halibo Shanda Bahaya, but Esther had her information right up. But it tired cover gave to Esther to keep her advice, to keep her heritage a secret. Come on. Sometimes I said, God, I'm secret. I keep saying this over and over that is not everything god wants you to tell people it's not everything about you people need to know god had a secret about esther that he didn't want everybody to know thanks be to god she followed the advice of mordecai mordecai said keep it a secret for he did not even know that the king would react to esther and that esther would become a queen however but he took a chance. The queen, Roboko Shoto, Esther, the queen, was told. the time you need to lock on hallelujah is my voice still fading that is the time you need to lock on you need to lock on and that person hallelujah somebody saying check you is it any better now is it any better is it any better is it any better praise god that is the time you need to check, hallelujah, with these people and say, Papa, you know, God has promoted me. Now is the time I need you to pray. Esther is a woman of wisdom. She understood that her connection with her cousin, Mother Kaya, was something that need to be kept. It needed to be respected. It needed to be honored. It needed to be cherished. So the word of God continued to exhort us that the king was also told by Mordecai about assassination attempt on his life. It's not just no people trying to kill us it's not just not they, they cannot stand what god is doing in you but let me tell you something hallelujah their eyes have not seen it yet because god is getting ready to showcase us alert alert esther's your time to be showcased has come so esther was inaugurated as queen and esther had constant information given to her even about a plan assassination that will be attempted on the king's life praise the name of a jesus christ there is a wild enemy and that's why i'm very thankful in my spirit some of you we have some enemy god will tell you don't even acknowledge them no they could sow a million dollars don't acknowledge them this is the pride of mordecai mordecai refused to acknowledge amen because amen is anti-god amen of an anti spirit in him amen is in a secret society not discerning god and so mordecai would And as a result of that, this vile man named Haman was the king right and man. He came to dislike Mordecai in his displeasure. Haman devised a plan to rid the kingdom of all Mordecai's people. Somebody say, wrong man, wrong nation, wrong 
dangerous devil. You should be careful. Praise the name of Jesus. The king was not attentive enough. And that is why God will use us to work alongside other people. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody said volume. Hallelujah. Um, somebody said volume. Hallelujah. Is my volume down? Oh my God. Some, somebody need to abide every distraction and sow this in the blood of Jesus. Satan will lose you. Every electromagnetic uh, binding will lose you. I will break curses and release the anointing to flow on this broadcast in the prophetic name of Yad E Ava E. Praise God. And so, wrong address. Some people are following you because they know that God has a great destiny for you, men and women of God. This is what the Lord tell me. So they want to each on you for their promotion. But like Mordecai, we don't care who you are and what you call yourself. Our respect and allegiance go to the most high God. That was what get a man angry because Mordecai, Kaya refused to pay any attention to him. Mighty God, he began to plan how to kill the people of God. I prophesy whosoever is planning to kill you, they will run up in the God of Mordecai. Praise the name of Jesus. Pay attention, saints of the Most High God. God could not allow his people to be annihilated because of Jezebel's pride, because of Mordecai is pride. The Lord says their belly is their God. Every minute they walk and they touch their belly because their belly is their God. Not discerning the Lord. True people who belong to God, they don't even care about certain things. Hallelujah. That these people who are filled with pride and ego is is, is paying attention to Esther had a kingdom assignment. A genocide was planned to kill off all our people. She did not care about who is to be announced and who is neither recognition, neither did Mordecai. Get this in your mind. You cannot be distorted by people who are not going nowhere. God says their belly is their God. Today, while I'm dressing, God said these people, their belly is their God. Every minute they parade themselves before the mirror. And look, that is where they're going to preach. Preach to themselves in the mirror. But for you and I, who have a kingdom assignment on our life, mighty God, wrong address. You will never get recognition on this platform. The only one that's going to get the recognition here is Yad -e of -e Can I prophesy? And so, praise God, the plot of Amen show you how artless he is, how corrupted he is. Do you think that God could let a critters like that have influence over his chosen people? Do you think that God is stupid? Do you think that God don't know the, 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 the mind of Amon? Amon the Agagite is a descendant, hallelujah, of Agag, the king who Samuel told, hallelujah, saw to kill and saw spear him. But thanks be to Esther and Mordecai, this enemy was being set up by God. Let me stop a little and begin to prophetically tell you what God says to me. Sometimes you see some enemy parading themselves and all up in their element and you're saying, God, but this person is wicked. You're saying, God, this person is a witch. You're saying, God, this person has done many things to your kingdom. And God say, all oh, your peace. Hello, somebody. Body because the promotion is what it was not going to be permanent. Oh, God has something else up his sleeve. Our God is very strategic. The story of Esther in the Old Testament easily match up with the story of our arch hallelujah enemies of modern day that have their destructive plan and artless obsession with self. 
Hallelujah. Self gain, self recognition, self, self, self that wants to be used by the enemy to destroy God's people. But God says, Most surely, my Esther, you will not sit on the periphery and look in because the success of God's kingdom is going to be, hallelujah, laid in your hands. You are going to find yourself participating. In it both spiritually and physically. Hallelujah. God says, study yourself very carefully. Each one of you begin to study yourself. As you begin to study yourself, you will see how oh, God is speaking in your life in various ways. Come on. He's speaking in various ways. Today, God says, me i'm about to shift some things in nation i'm about to shift some things in kingdom and i need my prophetic esters your beauty will be a weapon your intelligence will be a weapon your devotion with god will be a weapon that god will use your anointing will Will be a weapon. Your education will be a weapon. Everything in you is going to be a weapon that God is getting ready to be using in the end time. God is going to use you, hallelujah, to dispossess some evil spirit. God is going to use you to dispossess the enemy that is leading his children in the zone of death and destruction. God says to tell you. The latter end of you is bigger than anything you can ever imagine. And he is getting ready to give you peace. And so God is, hallelujah, dressing his prophetic esters. And God is getting ready to give you kingdom revelation. He's going to pack you with kingdom revelation for the end time. This revelation will demystify a lot of things that are has to do with the end time. I feel the holy Bashanda Mahaya. These esters that are coming into prominence out of obscurity. God sent me tonight. Where are you wandering to? Where will you go? God is going to open the secret to you. The files are open. Get ready to see from heaven perspective the pathway that you must take. There is a nation before you that needs the redemptive power of God through you and in you. And so first, Esther had to encounter God just like Moses encountered God. Hallelujah. The parallel that I'm trying to build to you and to get you to understand is that Esther had to see God in her own individual life. She began to see See God winning the page and see God finding favor with the king. See God causing her among other queens to be constantly requested by the king. Seeing God, hallelujah, even though the name of God was not mentioned in the book of Esther, everywhere God was revealing himself. God was revealing the reality of who he is. Moses had a similar encounter. God started to reveal to Moses. God wanted Moses to know that I am God. I am the I am that I am. Hallelujah. Moses, put your hands into your shirt. Tuck it out. Do you see what I do? Moses, rub a bubble, show down your staff. Pick it up. Do you see what I do? So God wants his Esther's to have a personal encounter with him so that he can display you 
publicly. God says to Moses, I am who I am. Thus, say to the children of Israel, I am have sent you. According to Exodus 3, 3 verse 14, in the revelation that God has given Esther, it gives her a good disposition that if God can make me win this competition among all these beautiful women, then I can believe God for whatever he has brought me to the kingdom to fulfill in the name of Yahshua. The mystery of your assignment is not going to be difficult anymore. Many of you don't understand your assignment, God says. And so the mystery of your assignment is being unveiled. Some of you, you are called to intercede, Esther, for the governmental structure. Some of you are called to pray for the economy. Some of you are called to pray for the manufacturing company. Some of you are called all to pray for the technology. Why do you think God has been training you? Why do you think you are seeing the demons in your dream and getting up and robo kosoto rebeko sata and watch what they came to plant in your life? Never take root, never come to fruition. You were under training. Can a prophet aside? I feel the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. God was providing the insight that you need on a personal basis, on a personal level. Some of you will say, oh God, increase my faith. The disciples were like you. They think that they need an appointment with God to get their faith increased, to step into the level that they see God demand of them to operate in. But Jesus said, if your faith be as small as a mustard seed, this is incredible. Oh, you don't need huge faith. You just need faith that is synchronized and syncopated in your heavenly father. Because as you believe me, I will perform that which you're asking in the prophetic name. I feel the Holy Spirit. And so God is raising us up in this time of darkness. The enemies are not able to understand why the seeds that call themselves Christians are not going under. Instead of them going under, they are raising from glory to glory. Glory, God is burning out their powers in extraordinary way. The enemy wants you and I to stay in the territory of demotion and stagnancy, but because you are Esther Rokobo Shandabaha. Brought to the kingdom for such a time like this. God says, No, you are a seed. Do you know what I'm going to do now with you? The trials that you go through, I'm allowing it in you to germinate you, to cause you to flourish. Where once you fail because you have a kingdom assignment on you, you will no longer fail, but you will succeed in your endeavors. There are some people on this line whoo, that God is getting ready to so showcase. Some will be global. Some will be global. Some will eat CNN. Some will eat Daystar. Some will eat TBN. Some of you will say, am I that person? Is this Anna? Is this Novelette? Is this Jessica? Is this Princess? What happened? You are a missile designed by God. For the end time, Rikabo Shadabaha, where other people are backing down because your kingdom assignment is calling you 
to come to the front is calling you to run through your troops. That is your competitors. That is those that are in the pageant to take the title. Amen. Because your kingdom assignment requires that you come to the front now. It's not my word. It's God's word. God is getting ready to showcase you. You are the only one with the anointing that understand the time and the season. You are the only one with the anointing that understand how to kill a man, how to set him up, how to intercede before the king until you get an audience with the king. You are the only one who is willing to risk your life. If I perish, I perish. I must get what God has for me. I must walk in my mantle. I must walk in my kingdom mandate. You're the only one with the anointing to see the plans of the enemy from afar. You're the only one who God can trust to go into the kingdom and not be spoiled. You're the only one who God can trust to keep the secret of the Lord. Who am I here for? It's your time to manifest that dimension of glory. All you need to do is say, God, here am I. My life is yours. Make me a symbol of your glory. Tell me what I am to say to go and light my world. My world is in darkness. A man has planned to kill us. A man wants to take our life. But I need an anointing. I need you to showcase me. I need to operate in a dimension of power, a dimension that will disgrace my enemy. In the name of Jesus. Robo Kosoto, Robo Kosoto. In the name of Jesus, come on, somebody. Rebo Bobo Shata Rabba Baba Baba. Hale Bobo Shata. Rika Bobo Bobo Shanda Baba Baba. Hela Baba 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 Baba. Hora Baba 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 Baba. Hela Baba Baba Baba. Just a minute, please. Urgent call coming in. Baba Bo Shada Baba. God wants to reinstate you. Hala babo rababa mando roshaya. Mm-hmm. On a live broadcast. Talk to you later. Kora baba barusha barusha bara. And so many of us have such a serious kingdom assignment. A serious kingdom agenda. You cannot be bothered with those that are up in their element of self and, and, and all about my pride, about my this. Go to hell with your pride. We have kingdom agendas on our life. Praise the name of Jesus. Esther was not the only one who had a kingdom agenda. Robo Kusata Daniel also had a kingdom assignment. Our people were too going to be annihilated. Daniel practiced the gift of wisdom in Babylon. He was separated to serve in the king's palace. So I see this in a very serious chronological order. Joseph, Daniel, Esther, God, all, all, all of them were raised by God to the place of prominence. Halibo Oshi Kandidio Saya, where they will have an impact in what it would be at that time to defeat the enemy. Daniel was called during the night, hallelujah, to in the palace of Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar had various gifts gift that he would like to bestow upon Daniel, but Daniel was not disturbed since. What I'm trying to tell you, ego cannot do this, pride cannot do this. You must 
our thus says the Lord, you must be able to announce what God says to you. You must get it. You must articulate it. You must know how to appropriate it. Strange things were happening in the palace while they were drinking and partying. A hand was writing on the wall. I am here to prophesy to this audience that you are the only one who can read the inscription of what's written on the wall. Praise God. When Daniel arrived at the palace and read it, what was on the wall? He was mightily used by God in his spiritual knowledge and interpretation that a divine judgment of God was going to be released. Saints of the Most High God, I am only here for those who God has been preparing for this kingdom assignment. Now that brings me to the other part of my message. God says he's elevating some of us to the government. Robo Kushaya, this is not the Persian Empire, or oh, these are various governmental, hallelujah, structure and system where the notorious arms of the devil need to be broken. Halibo Shabababa, the notorious arm of the enemy need to be broken broken so that the nation can be free and here are some of the people hallelujah that i'm seeing you are you cannot hide i have to call you out god is using you in a phenomenal way please hear me I am one of them. Guard up your line in Zion. Let not those who sell their soul out to secret society come par parade themselves before you make you feel like God is not working for you. Their God is their belly. They only think about their belly, their bums, and their shape. They don't have no word in them. They don't have any assignment but you, it's not so for you. You have a kingdom assignment. You are chosen. God will give you the supernatural wisdom that you need. Praise God. The most important thing you need to know that there is a death sentence. Ah, prophetess, be careful now. There is a death sentence on our lives. There is a death sentence of our nation, we need the Esthers endowed with the gift of wisdom, endowed that the power that is resolute, that the situation cannot go unnoticed. What did Mordecai said to Esther just in case she was becoming proud and sit back and relax? Mordecai said, Who to tell if you were not brought? to the kingdom for such a time like this. Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. The spirit of excellency will come upon you. God has gifts that we have not tapped into. God wants to write your books. God wants to write your story. Will you receive an impartation of the mantle of Esther? Praise God in Zion. Today, as I was crying out, hallelujah, I cried, I cried when God began to tell me about the mantle of Esther, the mantle of Esther. I said, Jesus Christ, but everybody, most people are running. Most people are running. Most people want to make sure they don't die in this. But Esther was saying, if I perish, I perish. It is serious, saints. The mantle of Esther is an extraordinary mantle. It's not a mantle for people who don't know their purpose. Esther knew her purpose. And she could duly say, God, use me under death. Warrant under death sentence. Use me to edify my people. Use me to save my people. Holy Shadaba. Rikabo Shandaya. I want to go into the prophetic 
break. Hallelujah. We are in the dungeons of lion. We are in the dungeons of lion. There are death sentences on us. Hallelujah. But God wants the blood of the unwriting of that death sentence. Hey, so he is waking up his Esther with a distinguishing gift to discern the time. Esther at discernment. She know the difference between the plot of Mordecai and they understand what God has preordained for his Jewish people. Every Esther under the sound of my voice, you need the gift of of discernment. I feel that God has sent me tonight to pick out some Esthers. I feel like God has sent me to pick out some Esthers. Novelet Weatherburn, Ingrid Rampal, Frederick Winters. I feel like God has said, Anna, there are some Esthers that I'm getting ready, calling Burke, Rikabo Shanda Bandidi Kushai, for God says, this is the hour, hallelujah, of sign, Dunamis will speak in an unprecedented way. You will not have to back down and retrograde. The assault of the enemy is great. So it was in Esther time. Can you imagine how many children were crying? How many mothers were crying? They were wailing. Thank God we discern the spirit of death. We discern there is a conspiracy. We discern God. There is a plan to kill us with biological warfare. There are principality fighting us. There are powers fighting us. We need you, Rabba Kushiti. The esters that God wants to use, number one, must have these criteria. Number one, you must be able to discern the time that you're in the spirit of discernment. First Corinthians 12, hallelujah, verse 10. Daniel practiced also the gift of discernment. Hallelujah. Esther practiced it. When they hear the summons to death, they will not despair because because the spirit of discernment tell them what the outcome would be. Number two, the gift of prophecy. You can never negate it. First Corinthians 12, verse 10. Daniel was a prophet. Esther was a prophetess. She was an end time prophetess in her time. Oh no, her name is still spreading a bird to our ministry. So I call to order in the court of heaven, end time Esther. Why you have to use the kingdom strategy that is given for the same thing that you see occurred in the Bible. Providence Anna, come straight. What do you mean? Go deeper and demystify it. Explain it. Let me be, be very explanatory. You see, what was is the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. So Esther deal with the genocide by asking for a three-day fasting. Huh? She said, I will not eat. Neither will my maiden eat. And she told Mordecai to fast too. So we, we cannot see genocide plan against us. We cannot see attack and assault from the enemy and just take things the way Robo Koshoto are your finish. You have to look in the Bible and see all other men and women of God when they were attacked by the enemy all day appropriated their gift and appeal unto God. The next thing, God was sending prophetic word. God was sending encouragement. Modern day Esthers, we need the prophetic activation. We need the prophetic template. We need the prophetic gift to be activated. We need to have the true testimony 
of Jesus Christ. That is the spirit of prophecy. So when we speak, it is not forfeit. 2018 or 2019, I prophesy about the, 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 the uh, mosquitoes. And I'm saying, God, everybody preaching prosperity. Why should I go speak about this? I bind every spirit that is attacking our grid and attacking us that we are not able to see nothing. Spiritual blindness must be downtrodden. We are not weak. We are strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Glory unto the Lord. So today I had to go to the court of Esther. Can you like the broadcast and share it, please? As I went to the court of Esther, God says to me, I, Apostle O'Neill, uh, Minister O'Neill, you're welcome, sir. Yes. God says to me, you need to cry for the mantle of Esther, the spirit of Esther. Huh, that is the spirit of just women made perfect. I begin to wail because what we need now is a revolution. We don't need people who are just intellect, intellect, intellect. Very excellent narrators. Their oratorical finesse is A class, but we're still under attacks. We're still not getting a season of rest. Ecclesiastic 3, 1 to 3 encourages us that to everything there is a time and a season. Hello, hello, hello. So if we're not getting season to rest, hallelujah, because those that should be teaching us principles and all to rest, they don't have power themselves. They have no power. They have no anointing. All they have in is intellect. Intellect in the morning. Intellect in the evening. Intellect is all they have. Am I talking saints of the most high God? We need some people who have the intellect. Yes. And we need some people who have the anointing. Hello, somebody. Are you hearing me? We need the anointing in diverse manner because we're dealing with all kind of power. So I begin to cry and wail before the Lord. I said, God, I need you to give me. He said, ask for the mantle. Ask for the mantle. I begin to pray. I'm praying for you two saints that you will ask God for the mantle. Hallelujah. You will discover that when Elisha was leaving, Eli when Elijah was leaving, Elisha says, give me the mantle. I need a double portion. So we need to ask God for the mantle of Esther, the double portion of Esther. Hallelujah. The double portion of her spirit, the double portion of her mantle. Are you hearing me, beloved? We need that mantle of intercession, that mantle of power, that mantle that don't care if we're faced with death, that mantle that will speak the truth, that mantle of beauty and reverential fear of the Lord. The mantle of Esther is what we need in this genocide. We need God to look down on us. I don't know who I came for. We serve an awesome sovereign God who have so many daughters that will do remarkable things in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Some of you need the mantle of Esther, which is the mantle of intercessory Praise God, this young woman know how to intervene in dangerous time of opposition. She knows that the life of her people were contingent on her. The poise to kill her did not trend her. The king was being threatened. The people were being threatened. I mean, this murderous amen, hallelujah, was so wicked. He has so many evil the plot that he wanted to do, but thanks be to God for the mantle of Esther, coupled with the mantle of Mordecai, he was not able to fulfill his enterprise. Hallelujah. Now, let's move from Esther. Let's speak about us. Our enemies may not be, hallelujah, amen, 
of latter here, but we have some modern day amen. And they may not necessarily be, hallelujah, a man in, in terms of gender. We have some men or women that don't want to see you elevate in life. Hello, somebody. You have some men or some women that is a sign as infiltrators that come into your life and an agenda to waste you. And that is why God is reminding us of how Esther's intercessory ministry caused her to prevail. God is saying the same thing to us. Whoever planned to kill you, to kill me, as we intercede before the Lord, the Holy Spirit will begin to unveil their plan, no matter how they try to hide it. No matter how they bewitch your spiritual senses, that you can't see anything, you can't discern anything. Once the Holy Ghost come, my sister, the breaker anointing upon you will break off their charm, break off their voodoo, break off their necromancy, break off their shamanism, break it off so you can see them for who they are. So God is saying we must cry out for the mantle. Number one, we need the mantle of intercession. The saints need to intercede. But we have a great intercessor that wants to combine his anointing with us in the person of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 26 to 27. When the Holy Spirit prays, he travails with groanings that cannot be uttered. When you are an Esther and you have an intercessory mantle, you must know how to draw the presence of God in the life of people and yours because you are coupling your anointing with that of the Ruach Kodesh. I feel the Holy Ghost. We're getting somewhere. Hallelujah. Esther must have revelation. Esther must know how to petition using her divine authority. Using her divine authority. No, the es Queen Esther came into a place of prominence and a high rank. Her rank was so high that she could counter petition the king. Praise God. So when the king signed that, hallelujah, that, that, that trapak with Amen, not knowing that this was a wicked plan to kill innocent people. Thank be to God. Esther had a rank like unto the king. And that rank for us is our spiritual authority in God. We urge prayer, supplication, intercession. Hallelujah. God will begin to open the files of who planning against you. And you will be able to systematically move in a place of wisdom, not overly exhausting yourself. Know that God whisper and said, these are the ones. Hallelujah. This is a profound thing. The ministry of Esther is a very serious ministry. And it is to be used into the kingdom at this time. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Many of you today, I get up and I start to sing Bob Marley song. Huh? I was playing who the cap fit. Let them wear it. I believe that Bob Marley misses calling. Eh? Because some of the world that Bob Marley speak, they are so endowed with, with wisdom. I was singing the song. And I said, God, what is this? Hallelujah. Your royal life, saints of God, because you are inaugurated in the kingdom of God. Your royal life like mine may be under attack. They want to kill you. And very well you know who it is that wants to kill you. But God is giving them time. Because when the bombs start to drop, there will be no mercy. Are you hearing me, saints? Hallelujah. So you must have a level, a dimension of 
intercessory. You must be ready to be used by the Holy Ghost. Your gift combined with the Holy Spirit as you cannot operate independent of the Holy Spirit. The next thing, Kingdom Esther's, that you need, you need to find yourself in the perfect will of God. You need, God will guide you when you're in his perfect will. Hallelujah. The reason why, and I keep saying this to people, if they're killing you, let them kill you on the assignment. If they're ridiculing you, let them ridiculing you in your assignment. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Because once you're assigned to a particular place or a particular thing, it is God's responsibility to protect you. Praise the name of the Lord. Now I want to go into the prophetic just a little. Hallelujah. So let me wrap up here because God wants us to experience the tremendous blessing that comes when we are aligned to our assignment. Esther had to get protection even if angel had to come because she had a major hallelujah mandate. Now I'm looking at some of you that I see the enemy has been working witchcraft on you, sorcery on you, uh, electromagnetic witchcraft, tried to kill you, tried to make you sick. Hallelujah. Do you know why they want to kill you? It is because of your kingdom assignment. Look me eyeball to eyeball and square your shoulder and hear this from this prophetic vessel. Do not be afraid of them. Stay in your place of assignment. Now, when you begin to stay in your place of assignment, this is all you will win the victory. Oh, Lord, my God, I am in my place of assignment and this woman is doing this. This man is doing this. Should I stop the assignment or should you stop them? You know, when you stay in your place of assignment that is given to you by God, God will stop them before they stop you. So let me prophesy to some people so I can get off this broadcast quickly and ask you to share. Because when God began to take me, Prophetess Kamara, the mantle of Esther, Prophetess Novelet, the mantle of Esther. Prophetess Ram Paul, God has in activated you in the prophetic. Do not be afraid or ashamed to prophesy. Hallelujah. Prophetess Novelet Weather Brown, huh? I'm going to speak to you now because this is what the Lord is saying. Robokusan de Libo Baba. The Lord is giving you a personal revival, woman of God. There are some major connection that is coming. Think it not that because you are a female, hallelujah, that God can use it in such a profound way. The Lord says he is giving you a clearer description of your kingdom mandate. God wants to use you to advance his kingdom. Your assignment is very serious and it's very complicated. It must be held with high level protection that comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, prophetess novelet, will not allow you on various platforms in this season. Because I see where some people who have the third eyes will try to infiltrate your mantle. The word of the Lord in your belly is accurate, says God. You are one of the most accurate prophets around, but many people don't know. And so God is getting ready to uh, showcase you because you were in a place of personal training, I hear the Lord says. And this is the season of public display. And the reason why God is uh, allowing the enemy to harass you is like you have become too comfortable. 
There are, I see a man of God in Jamaica, a pastor. I just keep hearing the name Ian, Ian, Ian. A I A N I A N. I keep seeing this man, and the Lord says there are some prophetic messages that is given to you, is impressing on your heart, even in the need of greater pioneering, and even in the need of taking your assignment in that ministry very serious. The Lord says he did not send you to America to lose track of your kingdom assignment because you're called to influence nation. And this is a new burden for you. The Lord is saying many people will not die because you were active in your kingdom duty. The Lord says there are sicknesses that the enemy is projecting. I want you to hear me and hear me very well. There are sicknesses that the enemy is trying to project in people. In your place of assignment, in your place of kingdom intercessory, I will begin to drop the names of people that Satan even wants to take out in this time of this pandemic. And you will lay before me and you will bring their cases before me and I will intercept and I will cause them not to die. The Lord says, get this straight. You can never negotiate with me about the purposes and plan that I have so, hallelujah, much invested in you. Hallelujah. God says, tell Novlet, I have invested so much in you. Robocosoto, you carry some as books, you carry some as flames, you carry some as poetry. Kadushamanastaya. I see the Lord <laughs> releasing upon you evil a poetic prophetic, where you will be very poetic in rhymings and Things to do with marriage and love and, and, and unity and sex and beauty. And you're going to rhyme them. People will be getting married and they will send to you to, to give them something. Hallelujah. That is poetic yet prophetic in their wedding. Does that make sense to you? Hallelujah. And God begin to say, your eyes are open. But novelet, the spirit of fear will cause you to, 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 to retrograde. I have shown you great and marvelous things. And yet, there are yet more for you to understand. God says, lay your fear. And if you say you have no fear, and if you say you're not sometimes intimidated, you are not speaking the truth. But God said, lay the fear down. Ah, for you're getting ready to take it up in government. You're getting ready to take it up in the social welfare of the youths. You will be an advocate for them. You will be stopping criminal activities in various part of um, 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 the U.S., and various part of Jamaica. Huh? I see an acute prophetic anointing coming upon you to discern spots, key location of wicked men that have abducted children. Get ready. And that's why God is saying, give me your fear. Because as God starts to give you the information and tell you to call the police, you will not be afraid and said, what if they ask me, how do I know? Do you know that people who are walking in a dimension of apostolic and forensic prophetic insight into the prophetic realm, they work along with the, F, the, the FBI and the CIA. So God has given you a very deep depth in the prophetic and this depth is an interception. Can I tell you? You will, she said, I've been writing poetry from a teenager. 
She said, yes, prophetess, I've been writing. That's glorious. Poetry. Poetry. Yes, I see God using you in that dimension. Do not fear, but lay it down. So the mystery, listen, because some big things are about to happen in the government. You're going to see it six to eight months prior. You must not keep quiet. You must date the time and you must post them. So that when it happened, like when I prophesied in 2019 about the, uh, when I prophesied about the, um, the mosquitoes, genetic modified mosquitoes, I did not, I make sure I have the, the broadcast on YouTube still, because some people don't believe, and you're not trying to build a name. You're trying to make sure that the words you speak, when it come to pass, God will get the glory. So this you gave me yesterday, woman of God, was a prophecy from 2019. I'm going to repost the um, prophecy on my page on, on Facebook so others can watch it. So when you get the, like like in, in prayer, today I get a word. Pray for Pastor um, Donnie McClurkin. Start praying for him because I see something coming. Not good. That has to do with his health. So God begin to give me revelation and insight. You have to write prophetess. I am telling you, if you begin to release yourself now, your prophetic anointing will escalate into the government. More. You have a little, but you're at the level now where you're challenged because you're trying to bring righteousness by force. But this righteousness can only be enforced when you have the mantle and the jurisdictory right to operate in that dimension of authority. Then the powers will bow underneath you wonderfully. You will begin to see things becoming more easier to attain. No, it's struggling. If you say B, the devil say A. If you say Z, the devil say A. Because you need to come into your realm of judicial right and rank. That is why you need a mantle of Esther. Then after you get this mantle, other notable pastors, apostle and prophet will see that you can no longer stay here. You need to be ordained, official ordination. Because your kingdom assignment requires that you get it verified so that the enemy cannot accuse you, woman of God. That's the word of God to you. I want to speak, Rabba Kushete. She said, I also started a book, which is a portion of it published in a magazine in Barbados in 2007. How will I know these things? I don't know these things. It is God. I want to speak to Minister O'Neill. Thank you, Minister O'Neill. The Lord is showing me that there is indeed a pastoral call upon your life. The Lord says there's many shaking and many shifting. I know you confirm with me various prophecies that I give you over a period of time, but this is a prophecy that has to do with the next phase of your ministry. God is bringing you into ministerial portion. God is activating your pastoral anointing to another level. The Lord is saying this is a season to speak less because I hear God says the next phase of God in you, it takes meditation. And I see you're going to have to retreat from some formalities, some kind of engagement so that you will not miss your Kairos moment, which is the God's appointed time of visitation because God don't only want to give you the mantle. He wants to give you the power gift that when you speak along with your mantles, these things will be appropriated as you have said it in the prophetic name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, that is the prophetic word to you, Prophet O'Neill. You're a man that I see God is going to use in nation. Watch what God will do with you in Barbados. Belize and Barbados is two foreign country that God is getting ready to release you in the prophetic name of Jesus. Thank you for the confirmation in Jesus' prophetic name. I want to speak to Carlene Burke. Oh, Rabashanda, Colleen Burke, 
So from now to the next, I hear an 18 week span, it will be revival, reflection, and the Lord says to tell you, he is building you up. This is a season when an unusual dimension of favor is going to eat you right as you're in the battle. I see where the enemy is raging different kind of, I call them destruction, because the depths of the warfare has not yet been released yet. The enemies only distract you in order to detour you from that. The Lord wants you to stay in this place of pressure because as you pursue, hallelujah, what he has laid so profoundly on your heart, you will realize that the obstacles and the barriers and the boulders are breaking off you. I'm getting the date 18th of November, the 12th of November, the 16th. These are three key dates that you must never forget. The Lord says, I've appointed you a season of festive memorial. And even though your enemy has gang up on you many times to make you look you know, like you don't even know what you're doing, huh? Because this is your Esther time and the paradigm of your life has shifted. You're coming now into prominence. You're coming now into your rest. That's what happened to Esther. When she come into her reign, she could rest from the, pa the page and she could rest from the competition because she come in her place of reigning. So what I see God doing you with the Carlin Burke, God is bringing you into a place of rest. Oh my God, you're going to be in so much rest that you will be wondering, am I okay? I mean, is, is, is everything okay? Yes, because God is killing out some witch doctor. I see someone that get an assignment on you on the 16th of September last year. Your life was invaded at different time interval by a lot of different strange attacks. That person was a woman. Hallelujah. And the Lord says he has hid, hallelujah, the real thing from you. You're getting ready to get answered to some questions that you have been asking God. The question that you need to ask God is, how did the enemy get this access? Because this is not an, an enemy that is an outward enemy. This is an internal enemy who knows your ins and out. And so God is giving you back double for that. Double for that time of invasion. Double for that time when you had that restlessness in the night. Hallelujah. No matter how you try to soothe your spirit, it's like your spirit was not being be quieted because there was an invasion of witchcraft attack. Those manipulation is over. The curse is broken. You are accelerating in a new place. God says vengeance is is. God is going to utterly destroy your enemy one after the other watch it because you're coming into the showdown time there's a time when god will relent and there's a time when god execute judgment to show that he is still the sovereign god wrought in righteousness and justice in the life of his people praise the name of jesus christ amen that's the prophetic word for you uh um can you confirm anything that i say uh um beloved halebo shataribi korubuhu ma masha tina uh -huh. tina masterpiece tina my god Tina, listen to this. The Lord says you are not given to self-indulgence. I hear the word harvest, 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 harvest. Harvest of unparalleled proportion. The Lord says the demotion is over. I'm seeing you on major platform. This is going to be like a night's dream. Roboko Soto, Rebeko Soto. I see your transition will be fast, fast. There will be access to different things that you once had in your mind to do, but it did not come into fruition. The Lord says he's going to revive all those opportunities that you lost or you thought you lost. Some of them, the source that the opportunity was coming from would only have complicated the matter. So God break you from that for a six to eight month period. And now you have been transited. Can you confirm what I'm saying? Tina Masterpiece. Now you have been transited into a new place. 
The only thing that will be coming forth out of you now is the manifestation of that which God's want, because those affiliation and association was 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 demonic informant, and they were so diabolical in nature. They were behind you, working behind the scene to block and stop you at every means necessary. Want to keep you in their realm and in their category. But may God begin to exercise strong vengeance in this matter on your behalf. Because the hour has come now for you to reap the harvest of your labor. And it will be a tree and a half year reaping. Robo Kosoto. And God says, I must pray against sickness, allergies, ear infection and anything that has to do with low blood count Rabashanda, I pray for you now against allergies I pray for you now against low blood count Count. I pray for you now against any ear infection, anything that will irritate you. Mama shundu kusu mandeli shundu ramano shundu boku sukuribia. I take authority over every induction of the enemy in your internal realm, such as your lungs, your cardiovascular realm, under your heart, any irregular heartbeat, any palpation, any affrightedness. I take authority over it now, and I will. Release the peace of the Holy Spirit over you. In the mighty name of Yahshua. She said, yes, it's true. And the Lord says, open your, and I see you getting 30,000. I see 30,000. Robo Koshoto, this is the season. I don't know how many times you have applied for any form of loan or anything I have to do with money, but I'm seeing money coming your way. I see one for 30,000. I see one for 14,000. Rapaliborushadabaha. There are some business that you want to do. Mashikondolobohosata. And God says it is your time. God is dealing with your romantic life. It's a season of blessing. The glory of God is going to encapsulate your, your romantic life in a new realm. Get ready for answers to at least three serious things that you need God to do by now and the end of this year. If I be a woman of God, ah, if you appropriate these three things, praise, 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 if you are, if you appropriate praise and make it be a pattern and and consistently be in the word, huh? By the eighth of October, you will begin to see God shifting some things. You will be amazed at the ridiculous transformation. All God wants is for you to take your attention off them. These three major things that I see you want God to do in the era of finance, in the era of relationship, and in the era of some things that you have planned. Hallelujah. She said, I'm working on the business. Yes. Well, I don't know you. Is it, is it your first time on this platform? Halebo Osha, because Tina, Rabba Kasata, I'm seeing three businesses coming out of you. But God says you must slow down. Hallelujah. And be very, very, be, be very discerning who you share. Hallelujah. Things as they are in the embryonic stage, because I see a lot of women around you. They are very jealous, very cool jealousy, and they are saboteurs. They are under the carpet sabotaging. So uh, for me, um, I just thought to, I, I came off Facebook for a while because I was watching my enemies then from a long distance. Mm. I was watching who want me to die, who want me never to come back on a live broadcast, and who was conspiring, criticizing me behind my back. God began to show me them in the spirit. So I realized that every great man and every great woman of God will always have saboteurs. Uh, people, when you put on your makeup, they say, you look so confident. What happened to you? you know, didn't you call me? They never have a good word to exalt, uplift, and encourage you. They will come and milk your anointing. And, 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 and reduce you to nothing so that the voice of God in you is bequieted and you become irrelevant. So I have had my fair share of jealous women and still do have those that are very jealous of what I paid the price 
for and God has given me. And so it's not, you're not unique in the sense of having jealous people around you. They will always be there. Um, what I try to use to console myself, Tina, is to know that it's something about me that they desire and they don't have it. And they don't even have the gut to say, prophetess, can you give me an impartation of what you have? They rather to trample on it. And the Bible verse says that we should not, hallelujah, throw our pearl before swine. So people who you know want you dead and want to reduce it to nothing, you avoid them because your anointing can bless them and it can be a sword. It can be, uh, listen, people who fight me, I make sure I stay out of their way because when I start to pray, my anointing will literally start to strangle you. Hallelujah. So, Tina, I've had my fair share. Hallelujah. Praise God. Beverly Kramer, as I was looking, remember I gave you a 19 days, 18 to 19 days prophecy on one of my broadcasts. Uh, I, I think you guys were on the um, the broadcast. This is not the only prophecy. I'm going to just give you a full prophecy. This prophecy uh, sometimes I, I, I put this on. I want to put it on loud and clear. All you miserable haters. This is the Lord bringing his word to pass about the genetic modified mosquitoes. Yes. So you can't kill my prophetic gift. God gave it to me. Hallelujah. So I say that to say there are some haters. They don't like to see us prophesy. They say what prophetess Anna is talking is weird. But yet is a weird prophecy this come to pass in the Fox News yesterday about the genetically modified mosquitoes uh -huh, that will be coming into Florida. Hallelujah. And then after I get off this, another lady called me. Her name is, uh, she called, we have another lady that is on the broadcast. She's getting married. She write me and she's a prophetess. Can you send me your bank account? I started laughing. I said, what is the problem? She said, no, just send me what cash up, whatever. Uh, she said, I am so blessed by the ministry. This is what she wrote. She said, great prophetic confirmation and direction has come. She was on this platform too. She said, I have received every blessing and wisdom from the past few nights. God has given that God has given you. She said the um the perfect word that God has given you for me at this time. I really needed to hear from him in this my current it, um in this. She said, Is this your current cash app? I smiled. And she said, Send me. I want to send you an offering. She said, I felt the circumcision. Remember the other night we did the circumcision? She said, I felt the circumcision and the encounter of Anna. Remember, we spoke about Anna expressively, the spirit speak about Anna, and he spoke about um, the circumcision to maintain the Abrahamic blessing. She said she felt it, and I'll be getting married on August 8, 2021, and success has come regardless of the growing pain, prophetess. Regardless of the going pain, so you can always read it. Success has come regardless of the going pain. So she was saying that um, going pain. Prophetess, you are appreciated and you are glowing. Wow. I am so thankful for your life and for your ministry. Double. And I'm not talking about natural food. My soul has been well fed. Amen. Great. Days are ahead. Prophetess. So I, I, I get about a couple. I mean, everybody writing me now is confirming prophetic word that has come uh, to pass in their lives. Hallelujah. And I'm saying to God be the glory. So God is calling us to circumcision. And you see, that's why I'm not rushing because what I'm carrying is so heavy that before now I was moving out of my time. Some of us are like that. 
when the Lord give you a, a, a dynamic anointing and you're seeing things, you're trying to bring everybody into the knowing of what God is saying to you and they are not ready because we are, are in different time, different frequency, different realms. And so God began to deal with me and some parasites that are getting ready to be released upon the earth. You will see them in a, a Kenya, a Zimbabwe, and different kind of parasites. They will be flesh-eating parasites that will be eating people. That Dr. Ken, they will be eating out your flesh. I call them the um, synthetic eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood. On this day, the 4th of the 18th, 2021, I'm saying this, that I would like your help to send this globally. The way to divert these kinds of plague that is coming up on the earth is to synchronize and to syncopate your body, soul, and spirit in the realm, in the courts of heaven, where the eaters of flesh and the drinkers of blood cannot latch onto you. I see them. I see them in the realm of the spirit and they are like, hallelujah, like when you, you blow your nose, the knot of your nose. But these things are alive like jellyfish and they're eating flesh and they're drinking blood and their victim will have gangrene and it, it will cause many of them to be mutilated. It's going to cause gangrene. Remember, I gave you this prophecy. The next thing I'm seeing is that God is calling us for an estafas. The estafas is something that must be done in secret. God is going to give us code. The enemy is laughing at us now because he thought he has the church under siege, amputated and inoperable. Inoperable. But here is where the power is. Esther was not in a church. She was able to fulfill her kingdom assignment right from the palace, right from her position of authority. So God is calling some of you whom he has chosen for this fast. I have started mine today. It's going to be for seven days consecutively. It is not going to be the old day. It's going to be for hours, four hours, three hours. But the name of it is the Esther fast. The team of it is the Esther fast. What are you fasting against? Annihilation. Who will be annihilated? Any one of us. When? Anytime. We are in the last days. Everything that you see now is a perfect bonanza for the Antichrist. We are in the Antichrist era. And all the apocalyptic Bibles and stories in the apocryphas, these are the time that these events are occurring. God says, I must send out a call. It's a clarion call. To be on this fast. I should not unpick the people on public platforms. I should tell them to send me a text message that I'm interested in the fast. Those that I respond to in the text, you are the one that God has chosen to be the Esther. This is not for everybody. I am sorry. This is when people are going to know the secretness of fasting, the soundness, the purity. It must be God-centered, even though God himself was not mentioned in the book of Esther. Huh. He did phenomenal thing. The wisdom of God was displayed. What do we hope to obtain in this fasting? Wisdom for life preservation. If you think I'm joking, watch it. The enemy has gone to conference and we need divine protection 
in honoring God in this seven day fast, Esther did three. I, I split it into two. I give one to the Holy Spirit. I did the, the one for Mordecai for three days. I did the one for Esther for three days, making it a total of seven days. Dry, water, word, water, word, water, word. So those will be a part of it. And you are seeing the debt, the debt sentence that is written on us, our nation. You cannot be quiet and say, because it's not happening in your house, it won't affect you. Think not that you were brought to the kingdom for such a time like this. This is the time to fast and to seek the Lord. Should you be interested in being a part of this fast? You can text me only on 201-539-8703. And I repeat, 201-539-8703. Do not contact me on Facebook. I will not respond. Again, my number is 201-539-8703. Let me text it. Two zero one. Yes, that's the prophetic number. That's my number, Prophetess Anna. This has brought me to the end of tonight's broadcast. It is very serious. At the end of the seventh day, we, by the grace of God, we are going to gather. During that time, I will be having other broadcasts. Yes. But specifically, I am going to be channeling the prayer on the seven days fast, which my spiritual father will be praying as well. The Lord has something he wants to say. It takes fasting, dying to self, dying to fear. If you perish, you perish. You must possess the mantle of Esther to fulfill your apostolic mandate, even under the siege of death. This is Apostle Anarchy Israel. Please like. Thank you so much. I must commend you. I mean, huh, this thing has been shared. People is, is, is notifying me all over. I also gave a prophecy at St. Vincent. I still have the tape on the prior line oh, that God will bring, bring in judgment to um, St. Vincent. I am asking us to plead for mercy because I'm seeing. Little lands, islands like those just disappearing from the map. The anger of God in tsunami will suck it under the earth. So let us be watchful and let us be very careful what we're doing in this season. The mud of the Lord has spoken. God bless you. you can, if you want to know when I'm going to be on, just check on my, my, my YouTube channel. And you will see me notifying the days I'm out. And so you can invite your friends, family member, loved one, like, share, subscribe to my channel. Yahweh bless you. Until next time. Shalom.